How's it going guys, ladies and gents, welcome back to Trinket Shoe Repair channel. As always, I'm Dan, and today's video, in my opinion, is the biggest job I've ever done. And that is because we've got these Finnish M34 jack boots. They've been sent to us all the way from Tasmania. You know, we've had some from Australia, this is Tasmania. They've got a very solid rubber sole, but we're doing a conversion job on them. It's gonna be very special. Keep watching, see what it's all about. So once again, welcome back guys. Hope you're doing fantastic. So let's talk about the job. These have been sent in by Pat from Tasmania. And as he tells me, he is going to be using them for farm work. So at the minute, they are very solid rubber soles. What we're going to do is convert them into leather sole shoes, but with a whole lot of iron work. So doing hobnails, toe plates, horseshoe heels. So they're gonna be a real solid piece of kit when they're done. I don't quite know how much work it's gonna take. We'll have to find out as we take it apart. So let's get started. I will say just before we get stuck in, the last time I had an Australian pair of shoes, you might have seen I dressed up a little bit, made a whole load of Australian jokes. I promise I will make no more Australian jokes in this video. So as expected, have some big old nails to come out of these. I imagine the way we're gonna have to build it back up is by putting a whole bunch of new big old nails in. So these boots seem like they're pretty old, so all the leather is very dry, this heel block. It's stacked leather, so we can just peel it apart. all just crumbling apart. Oh, I'll be honest with you guys, this is being an absolute nightmare to try and cut apart like I normally do. So what I'm gonna do is just take it to the sanding band, get through these stitches, put a load of heat on it and just peel it apart layer by layer. All right, so we are through a few layers. Now to loosen up the rest of this, because it's so dry and so stiff, uh, I'm gonna just put some of the jerk off sole stripper on. Yeah, there we go. I likes me some jerk off. Right, so that jerk off is gonna really relax everything, and then we should be able to pull it off. So we've got a top rubber layer, and then we've got a leather sole underneath. So there we go, there's the bare bones, loads of dust. And I can see this boot has an extremely interesting construction that I'm gonna show you now. So what exactly is interesting about this boot construction? We have got a welt. You guys are all familiar with welts. The new sole is getting stitched onto the welt, and the welt is sewn onto the uppers. It's all falling apart, and if I can show you, pull this welt away, so it's all just falling off. We also have some upper. So what's happening is the upper's coming down and it's continuing to come out to essentially be part of the welt. That's called a stitch down construction. So the welt you can see is poking out towards the, the, sorry, the upper comes down and is poking out towards the edge. The sole is then gonna get stitched onto the upper. That's a stitch down construction. This is unusual. I've not seen one before because it's also got a welt. So the welt is sitting on top of that stitch down construction. 
The new sole is going to go through everything. So we're going to stitch through the sole, the midsole I'm going to put on, the stitch down upper, and then the welt on top. So you can probably guess what's next. This welt is falling apart. I've got to cut the rest of it off, and then we're going to have to uh, do a re-welt as well. So you know, I don't really have to cut this welt off. The, uh, the threads are all just rotten, to be honest. There we are, so it's a 270 welt, which means it just goes 270 degrees of the way around rather than 360. So it's gonna get a new bit of welt. All right, we're at the sink, guys, because I've had my welt soaking in water. So that just softens it up, makes it easier to stitch. What we've got is a storm welt. So it's got that little lip there. That's just gonna suit the style of the boot a little bit better. But before we get it on, there's gonna be some gluing involved on the boot and it's filthy where we're going to have to put the welt on. So I can tell you, once we've stitched the welt on, the stitch down is then going to be glued to the underside of the welt. So I need to clean it. We may as well scrub the whole lot while we're here. boots nice and dry and before we start our rewelt you're gonna need a few things black thread sewing awl a knife pot of glue and a can of coke right so let me show you just how it's gonna go guys because this is gonna be hard to do I think it'll be even harder to film but you can see this lip on our storm well so that's going to butt just right up against the upper okay like that so the finished item is gonna have that nice little lip which means when we're putting it against the stitch down lip, it's gonna be quite hard to tuck it in place. So I'm gonna use a bit of glue, everybody re-welts differently, but, but yeah, for now you won't be able to see. But what we're doing is we're stitching the welt to the upper, but not the stitch down flap. It's gonna go through the upper, through the inner liner of the upper, through the footbed, and it's all gonna be tied together. And then once it's all stitched on, we can glue this stitch down onto the bottom side of the welt. Did you guys notice how I didn't say, let's get sticky? <laughs> That's because I'm not very excited about this because I know this job's gonna suck. So we'll just get him in there nice and snug. That lip up against the upper. We also gotta make sure that this welt isn't gonna be in the way of the stitch down folding down nice and flat once we're ready to glue it on like that. Now this is going to be a bit of a cheeky monkey and take a while, so I'm going to time myself. It is 2.30 on Sunday, Let's see how long it takes to do both shoes. So you'll see I just glued the footbed to the inside of the upper, and now what we're doing is going through our storm well, through the upper, through the upper lining and then through the footbed. Get our thread pulling back through. Make our knot to tie it all up. Now then, just while I'm finishing up this particularly challenging, tedious task, honestly, thanks to you guys, all of you guys who have jumped across to my second channel already. Loads of you, it's almost, I don't know, that's 2,500 or so whilst I'm filming this. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate you guys who support me on my channel or channels. Now, if you haven't had a look, I'll put a link up here. Check out my second channel. It's not for everyone. It's mainly about my daily life, vlogs and stuff, but, uh, uh, a load about fitness, bodybuilding and stuff. And I'm soon finding that it's like having two kids, having two channels. <laughs> you know, I'm always thinking of ideas for new videos. And now we've got two different channels, two different themes, two different topics, two different styles of videos. It's, uh, you know, it's a lot for my little brain to handle. But I am excited and I've got lots of videos planned. Okay, okay that is the final stitch in the first boot. 
and it is 3.30, so it took me an hour. Now I've got to do the other one, but for now, let's glue this stitch down flap onto the well. So I'm just gonna get glue in there. So now that glue's dry and then heated back up again. Can just fold this down onto our welt. see the finished product okay so obviously it looks a bit of a mess at the minute but you can see the idea of the lip just sits up against the upper we'll get a bit of grease in there some polish and that's going to look nice once it's all stitched together okay so that's all the welting work done the keen eye of you will notice it's quite thick new welts come thicker than they need to be so we've got room to trim it down so the next thing we need to work on is building the base we need to make a new leather heel counter cork filler and then we're going to double layer it with a midsole and then the leather outsole. Right, so let's get our cork filler in. Flexo fill. people say it looks like crunchy peanut butter some people say it looks like oats I can tell you it smells like neither so a question I've had asked several times is does this cork filler harden or or stay malleable and soft and the answer is both so now it's actually very wet soft you know i can just push it around my fingers and it dries very rapidly give it 24 hours and it will be you know hard to touch but when it's hard like that it's still flexible you know similar sort of composition to cardboard so um it will still press down and mold to the shape of your feet but it will be more rigid than it is now in its liquid form and one more thing some repairers will will let this dry for 24 hours and then sand it on the machine to get it flat but it's not practical for me to wait 24 hours so what I like to do is just make sure it's flat just by running a hammer over it and you end up with the same result. So I'm just going to keep the boot on the last for a minute whilst I'm gluing it because it's a big chunky thing and we're doing two layers remember so we've got a leather midsole and then we're going to move on to the chunky leather outsole so let's get sticky. day of heat gun today. So what I'm doing when I turn the boot upside down like this is so that I can put the welt up against the metal last and then hammer the sole from the other side so it really squishes the welt and the sole together. midsole on and I've trimmed the welt down so it's a little thinner so it's the right shape. Now we got to get our thick leather outsole on and the reason we're doing it like this so we've got basically from top to bottom we've got the stitch down of the upper, the welt, the midsole, the outsole and then we're going to have hob hobnails on the bottom and that's that's going to make it really chunky and it's definitely going to be as thick as the originals. All right so let's get on with the job and I think for the fourth time today Let's get sticky. In 
into the cheese toasty oven. Cheeky monkey. Oh, yes, there is a Batman cup. Na 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 Batman. So there's our thick leather outsole on. That's as thick as the hole it's gonna be. So now we can trim it around, give it its proper shape, then put a groove in it ready to stitch together. Next on the agenda, we're going to secure the heel section of the sole. So we're just going to get some last tacks here. And this is going to go through the leather outsole, through the midsole, through the heel counter, through the upper, and then squash flat against the last. So it squashes flat against the metal on the inside. That's why you don't stab your feet. Very popular question. Don't let the sun go down. Right, this is the first time you'll see in Professor Horseshoe, and that's because I'm going to use him as a guide for where our new heel is going to be, where it's going to come up to. So I don't go too far with the nails. Don't let the sun go down. So next on the agenda, I'm just going to add a bit of colour to our soles, not just for decoration, but I'm thinking of Pat because, as I say, he's down there in Tasmania, and I know, I know there's snakes down there, so I figure if I make Pat's soles black, it might disguise him and they won't see him. And then he won't get bitten and in theory, I will have saved the life of a customer, and that is good service. So there's the sole portion of the job done. It's all stitched on, 
finish around the edge there and you can see the nice storm welts coming together quite nicely. So the next thing we've got to do is construct the heel. That's going to be quite a big job and put all the iron work on. It's also going to be a big job, but before that, I'm going to take a quick break, go and have some lunch. All right, we're back. That was delicious. So like I said, next on the agenda is our iron work. So we've got our iron toe plates, our treble stud hobs, and of course the horseshoes to go at the back. We're gonna put that aside, do it when we get to the heels. Right, so as we're putting these hobnails in, of course we're spacing them out and putting them in a particular pattern. When we normally do these for the RAF, there is a official pattern that we do them in, but of course this is just a custom job. I'm doing a little bit different, I'm calling it Pat's Pattern. This is actually a really tough work. I think I need a bit of elbow grease. Annabelle, could you grab the elbow grease for me, please? Sure. Here you are, boss. Hit me. Perfect. doing guys is putting some waste taxing so I think it's gonna make some pretty cool decoration but also it's gonna hold everything together and a customer's left the front door open so you guys can probably hear the world driving past at the minute let me go and shut it guys all right guys let's have a look where we've got to so there's all our metal work done it's looking pretty cool all right it's starting to come together so now we've got to make the heel now i'm going to do something a little different with this one we're going to make a stacked leather heel base out of just a whole bunch of leather sheets and i'll tell you why we're doing it this way we're working from sort of bottom upwards rather than putting the whole heel block on in one go and i'll show you why and yes i'm in a different shirt this video has rolled over to day two it's taking longer than i thought but here's what it is all right so a few layers down and as you can see i'm shaping it and polishing the inside as we go a couple more layers to go to make it the correct height that's the whole point we need to keep going until we get the right height i'm going to stop here to show you what we're doing next so normally we'll nail the heel blocks on from the inside but because it's so long there's no zips it's going to be a bit of a pest to get to from the inside so we're going to do it from the bottom the bottom inwards so we've got some long buttress nails that are going to go all the way through you know at, at this level before we built it up too much all the way through um through the heel counter through the uppers and again bend over on the last and you will also remember the first lot of nails I put in halfway around. That's so we've got room to put these nails in a little closer to the edge. And then we've got some more nails I'll show you in a bit that are going to be on the edge. time we add a layer we're also pressing it how are you guys doing over there i'll put you there so i can talk to you about the pitch so once we've got to a certain height on this heel block if we put it on top of the final layer which is going to be the horseshoe you can see it's not level so if i put it flat on the horseshoe it's up at the front 
that's not right. So we've got to make this the correct angle or pitch. So we need to shave away some material at the front to make it level. Right, getting there. So the next step is to get our top on. So we've got our iron horseshoe and rubber insert to go in. So the rubber insert is gonna be glued and tacked on. The horseshoe, we are using specific horseshoe nails for it. So what I like to do is get the rubber insert in place first, and then it can act as an anchor for the horseshoe as we're nailing it in, because it is quite a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a heavy duty process, nailing these horseshoes on. So now our horseshoe can anchor around that rubber insert. And just before we get our horseshoe nails in, I just like to make some little pilot holes to get them started. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, he was a good friend of mine I never understood a single word he said, but I helped him drink his wine Ow! Nails got me! It's a good thing I'm brave So there we go, that's the meat and potatoes, the hard work done. Cool, huh? Now we just gotta do some finishing touches. Gotta to sand around the heel, make it smooth, ink it, make it black, and then some TLC on the uppers. Alright guys, so that is the meat and potatoes of the repair done. We've done loads, haven't we? So we've done, there we can see the new storm welting. Okay, we did, uh, of course it's all done via the stitch down construction. We did the welt, stitch through the stitch down, midsole, chunky cork layer, leather outsole. We've done the hobnails, we've done the iron toe plates, the iron horseshoes, of course the ironwork and this chunky stacked leather heel block. I'm really happy with how this has come out. It's such a solid job, this is going to last forever. But we're not done yet, the uppers are a little tired, a little dull, they need some TLC, so let's take a look at them. Okay, here we are. Here we are for TLC. I've got loads I want to do to these uppers and loads of products. So we've already cleaned the uppers when we washed the welt section. So first thing I want to do is really condition these uppers because it's quite a tough hide and it's a little bit dry. So you listen before, we're using the good old Safia Renovator. It's pretty much the gold standard when it comes to a conditioning cream for leathers. It's just like a really good moisturizer and it even smells good. And this stuff really is just like liquid. You can get it on with your fingers. There we go. So let me just work it all in. Now I realize this boot's so big, I'm not gonna be able to show you all of this. So I'm just gonna take it out of shop for a second to do it all and then I'll be back. Let's make sure to get down in all the creases here so we can hydrate down deep into the fibers. Don't wanna miss any bits. Okay, now one thing I like to do with Renev Tour is don't rush it. Let it dry, let it soak in. I'm gonna give it a good 10 minutes and I'm gonna come back and put some color into it. 
All right, so that's the Renovator dry, and just by hydrating the uppers, it looks as if we put more color back into them because they were so dry, but they're still a little dull, so we're gonna brighten them up a little bit as much as you can brighten up with a black boot. We're using the 1925 Medal Door Cream. So this is made of a blend of seven really high quality oils and shea butter. So it's got a lot of pigment in it that's gonna soak into the fibers of the leather and just essentially stain it back to a nice deep shade of black. Again, just getting everywhere in all the cracks. And again, we're gonna let this soak in for five minutes. Let it do its magic. So now the cream's dry, we're just gonna buff off the excess with our horsehair brush. And it should bring up a bit of a shine. So there we go, conditioned and a little bit shiny, but we can get shinier, so I'm gonna put a bit of wax on it. Now when I'm doing a quick shine, what I like to do is use the Sophia Mirror Gloss, but paired up with the Pat Deluxe. And the reason for this is the Mirror Gloss is a very, it's almost a pure wax, whereas the Pat Deluxe has more solvents in it. Now what solvents do is melt the wax to help with the polishing process. So if we just pair up the tough Mirror Gloss wax with the Pat Deluxe, it's gonna to work together and we can get a pretty superior fast shine. Now what I just like to do is when we've uh, added or installed a new storm well, sorry, I know it's hard for you guys to see when it's all black, but just between the uppers and this lip of the storm well, we're just gonna put a bit of grease inside, some dubbing, just to seal everything and make it nice and waterproof. So if you haven't used dubbing before, it's quite wet, so we can just sort of, uh, sort of stroke it into place and it's gonna go down the crack where we want it to go. as with most products, it has a nice shine to it as well. <clears throat> so there we go, job done. Okay, so that is it guys, job done, and it was a big job. So let's take a look at what we did on our jack boots. So of course, we stripped it all down. It's had the full leather sole, midsole, cork layer. We did the re-welt with the storm welt action via the stitch down construction. All the iron work, toe plates, hobnails, last tacks, horseshoe heels, and we rebuilt or rather made the stacked leather heel block and gave them a big tidy up. So this was a huge job and add it all together, it came to 370 pounds. So now all's left to do is ship them back to Tasmania, which is not gonna be pretty on the wallet either, but the customer I'm pretty sure is gonna be thrilled to get them back. And I'm very happy with how this job came out also. So that is the end of the video, but just before I leave you guys and do all the end stuff, I wanna show you something that just this second came through the door. We've got these tiny, tiny little boots uh, just sent in by Steve from Oak Tree Leather. Nice surprise, thank you, Steve. I might try them on, I think it might be a bit of a squeeze. And I'll tell you what I'll do, I'm gonna put them in the window with George. And he's all dressed up for Halloween now. So there we go, pop them right there next to the pumpkins. And there's George, looking proper spooky. So once again, thank you so much for watching guys. If you made it all the way to the end, do hit like, it really helps me with the channel. And hit that notifications bell. Loads of you guys say you miss my videos when they're live. Hit the notifications bell and you'll be kept in the loop every time I upload new content. And as always, contact us via the website tringshoerepairs.com if you want to talk to us about shoe repair. That's also the online store where you can find all of the Sapphire products as we are an official Sapphire retailer. So you can get the creams, the brushes, the polishes. There's loads of stuff there, so check it out. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, the next video I'm working on is actually for the other channel, my uh, Dan the Cobbler fitness and vlog channel. We're doing a how to deadlift video. So make sure to jump over there if you're interested in seeing that. But for now, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.